Hey everyone, so today we're going to talk about the location-based skills you need in the $18 billion GIS industry. And we are going to obtain all our insightful information from our speaker today, who is Andres Abeta. Welcome, Andres. Hi, Rebecca. How's it going? Good. How are you? I feel good. You got some questions for me today. Oh, I've got a bunch. I hope you can answer <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go right into this and ask you, where do you find today's GIS applications? Where do you find GIS applications? Um, they're pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. I'm about to jump onto a plane tomorrow. And mm -hmm. when I sit there next to somebody, I find it kind of strange not to do some little chit chat, at least to say hello to them. Where you're from, what do you do? So they'll ask me what I do, and I'll say, Yeah, I, I do GIS. Uh -huh. If if you heard me say, Hey, I do GIS, would you know what that was? Oh no, absolutely not. I don't think. I know. <laughs> well, I would what say about, about five about? years ago, it might have been one out of twenty people had heard about GIS. And now, if I'm talking to someone uh, next to me, it's probably about one out of three know something about GIS because. You know, it's so ubiquitous to have people say, well, I got Google Maps and I do directions. I've heard of GPS and, and GIS is now attached to that. You see commercials and advertisements and stories out there, even on uh, mainstream TV about uh, GIS. So that means the word is getting out and you can tell that GIS is, a, is the platform for you know, traffic apps and uh, crime maps and wild fire maps and emergency management maps that FEMA puts out in, in disaster time. So it's a lot of stuff. And, and also when you just go into your city to look and see what, when is my trash day and see a map and type in your address or look at your tax information to see if it's what you're going to be charged uh, by the city because you own a, a parcel in the city. Lots of stuff. And then, you know, the, the most impactful thing right now is the map that everybody sees on the news every day. What is it, Rebecca? What everyone sees on the news? Yes. Well, uh, I'll take a wild guess. COVID? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Johns Hopkins COVID map is the most consumed map in world history because of this pandemic. And now people can see, and all I got to do is subscribe. Oh yeah, the COVID map, that's GIS. Health data, I'll put in a dashboard for you to consume. So there's a lot of different ologies. They all collect data. They all could visualize it in the map. Yeah, honestly, people don't really realize it, but GIS is everywhere. And not many people know what it is, but they also do. But they just, you know, they don't know what it is specifically because they haven't come ac across the technology. But it's awesome how it's covered so many applications and that it's a part of our experience with technology in our day-to-day -day lives. So I'm going to ask you another question, which is um, what disciplines use GIS and what career paths can you get into with the knowledge you have in GIS? Yeah, so that's an extension of the question because, um, because applications are being built for everybody's data, then it doesn't matter if you've studied geology, anthropology, uh, biology, uh, business, digital yeah. marketing, all of that data can have a location tied to it. So then it's a question of you thinking about what do people want to know right. that solves a problem. And if you can do that, then you come up with these wonderful mashups of data into an application or a dashboard uh, exposed to an audience. They could all be fishermen for fisherman maps, or they could all be people in the community uh, wondering what are we doing in a time of a disaster. Uh, so in terms of the disciplines, I get students that come to us that have a environmental studies degree, studied a bunch of general stuff, yeah. didn't have a tech focused, so they're having trouble getting a job. And so they could come to us and learn about processing data from a UAV or um, how to analyze their data and put it in a visualization that could be in 3D or put up into the cloud, that kind of stuff. So all of a sudden, 
now with a technical focus, they can say, yeah, I love environmental studies, and now I can do a lot of analytics with it. Uh, it makes me more marketable than the person just with the general 3.8 GPA for the yeah. degree. A hundred percent. Absolutely right. Um, can you give some examples too of what someone would do with these skills? Um, so the hot topics out there are remote sensing, which is collecting data from the sky. And the most common place to collect from the sky is these UAVs or drones, more commonly known. You put them up in the sky, and then you can fly a, a flight court, uh, a utility corridor to assess uh, encroaching vegetation near a, um, a bunch of utility towers or something that's broken. They do it for maintenance surveys on, on utility structures. Um, so that's one example. I think about uh, renewable energy. We know this administration's saying we're going to invest a lot in that. Right. Uh, so I think about where money's going to be invested in, what problems there are. Energy is a problem. Money's going to go there. Now, how do you map out where we can establish the next wind farm or solar farm? There are people whose jobs it is is to just use GIS to look and assess different properties to say what has the best criteria for us to put with the best return on investment, a solar farm on there because it's wow. cheaper property, better access to, um, to the electrical system and you know, nobody's going to sue them for building structures that they don't want. You know, after you saying this, um, I don't know why anyone wouldn't want a job in GIS. This is like <laughs> stuff. It really is. Like it's it's the future of our world, which is I think what every student and boomer and teenager wants to get into because we all care about our environment so much. Yeah, that's that's a good thought. We care about our environment. Um, mm -hmm. When I walk around a uh, a gathering of GIS professionals. The binding thing about us is not what we study, it's what we want to do. And that is somehow better manage or protect the surface of the earth. And that means habitats, wildlife, people, and life in urban cities so that we can you know, manage resources better and have a clean, a clean amount of air to, to breathe and, and live healthy. So, a lot of big decisions come from the visualizations that come out of a GIS because they've distilled down gobs of information to something we can actually say, here's where we need to do something mm -hmm. to have a better life. Make a difference too, yeah. yeah. Um, so what type of- oh, What? Um, what type of roles do you see driving today's geospatial analytics? Okay. Um, so when you get into GIS, you could come into it for, with a lot of different um, degrees, as I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll see on the job boards, they're going to be called GIS analyst. Maybe GIS tech is the first one. You might get in and, and maybe have a lesser degree or a certificate and want to just edit data. That's the first thing, collect and edit data. Then the GIS analyst can uh, take that data and do analytics with it in a piece of software like ArcGIS or QGIS. Okay. Um, and then above that would be somebody that really understands how to put together an IT system to run um, for the distribution of these maps. So mm -hmm. that could be a solutions architect. Um, and then there's a GIS administrator that might uh, set up in the cloud the map services, the data, the security, the backups. Uh, so that's where you might have both some skills in cloud architecture and GIS software. And finally, there's uh, GIS coordinators or managers. You know, those people who have been in the industry probably going up through that chain uh, for five or 10 or 15 years. And then they, they manage staffs of people using GIS. Yeah. And I see a lot of students opting for career paths in these sectors as well, because it's definitely considered lucrative. To them and I'm sure a lot of students are going to be interested in geospatial analytics so that's very cool um, I don't know if you get if you get rich really fast when I hear the word lucrative but I will say there's a few things that make you feel good about the work you do getting paid is one of them 
and you're in the IT sector, you could be paid, you know, very well. Um, getting to live and where you want to. So right now with IT, remote work office hours uh, happen all the time, especially in COVID, and it's going to continue. And then uh, feeling meaningful about the work product that you create. So if you are creating data or analysis or systems that help uh, a bigger picture, yeah, protect the habitat or reduce global warming or shed the light on some social inequities that are maybe happening in, in a state, then that, that can make you feel really good. And that's, uh, I think a lot of people in IT don't necessarily get that feeling if they're just creating an app or you know, setting up a, a cloud. But here, all GIS goes to decision management in some really profound and awesome ways. Yeah, that this this was a really cool conversation, and I'm really glad I asked you this question because you had some really cool answers, very insightful information for students as well. Because I know people are very confused; they want to get into the GIS industry, but they aren't exactly sure how and where they can get a job in it. So I'm glad we talked about this. I appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, it's it's a great industry, and what I I have as one of my missions is to try to bring people into our industry on purpose. And what right. I mean by that is, you know, your counselor in high school or your teacher in science most likely doesn't know uh, what GIS is or that it can be a gainful career. Um, and a lot of my colleague friends of my generation came in from a lot of different uh, disciplines by accident. I just happened to find a uh, class or you know, did a project and they said, oh, this is really fun and they started doing it. Um, so yeah, I'd like to attract more young people like you to know about this and, and a whole diverse set of career paths that uh, can make you feel like I could make a whole career out of this because it's so diverse. You do a lot of different stuff every day. Well, you definitely got me interested. So. <laughs> Tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Andres. This is awesome. I hope you have a good day. All right. Thanks for uh, the interview. Appreciate it, Rebecca. No problem. Bye-bye.